Thanks, Darren. It's great to have the chance to talk about our sub-project and I acknowledge the two team members sitting over there, Associate Professor Owen Carter and Natalie, Dr Natalie Strobel. Uh, we wouldn't be anywhere where we are if it hadn't been for our fortune in getting two great appointments there. Um, we're a little bit different to the other CRN sub-projects in that we really, in a sense, decided to embark upon an area of research where we didn't actually have any uh, publications or grants or, you know, had been working in that area. But we did that because we knew that we were starting to move into what might be a niche market for ECU. And that has panned out, particularly, uh, particularly in one area that I'll talk about. Um, so in some ways maybe we're the embryo of a mangy dog. Uh, <laughs> And uh, we probably, in fact, can't get out of it either because it might be a, a life commitment, this one. So we've been uh, looking at a number of things, as you can see, uh, and uh, levering off with the first bullet point, developing evidence-based models of healthcare, levering off things like the Wanneroo GP Superclinic, and clearly our partners play in that space as well. So University of Queensland, for instance, has three superclinics and University of Melbourne. Um, one of our partners there, Professor Peter Brooks, he actually, in a sense, coined the idea for University of Queensland. And University of Western Australia, of course, in terms of the link with medical and primary health care research. The second area there, um, subsequent educational approaches, that's actually the particular area where we're really finding that we've uh, identified a niche market for ECU because we're looking at the impact of learning through simulation, particularly in mental health, because that's an area where no one really seems to be doing a whole lot, and we've uh, been successful gaining funding as well, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And then the final area, the augmenting the role of community-engaged research, that really comes from that concept of if you want the community engaged in research around developing safer and higher quality healthcare models and interventions, then how do you do that so it's not just the usual, uh, somewhat meaningless consultation around policy? So, we've received two research grants to date. We've been successful there, and we've got five currently under review. The first one that we received funding for um, is the investigation of the merits of simulation-based video teaching materials on interprofessional practice in community-based suicide prevention training. Uh, and so that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying we've, we've identified a rather new area for research. And that's been funded by the Val Lishman Health Research Foundation for $220,000. The second grant that we received is a randomised controlled trial testing the efficacy and cost benefit of cognitive behavioural therapy delivered by a group sessions versus self-paced simulation based video materials and we're looking at the health outcomes on chronic obstructive pulmonary disease patients, I always say COPD, it's much easier. Um, and that's actually $140,000, and that's actually from the SHRAC Fund, which is the State Health Research Advisory Council uh, from the state government, and they're quite competitive, so we're really pleased with that. We've got all our external partners scattered throughout, so we haven't got any of these grants or nor the publications that I mentioned, and we're doing them in isolation of our partners. So we don't always have UWA, UQ, Uni of U U UWA in each grant. We sort of pick and choose where the expertise is. <clears throat> Just answering your question, David, what's in it for them? Um, our CRN partners have really got it, and they often say to us, well, this is about us seeing what we can do to help you build capacity. And so that's the reason for our sub-project partners. Um, obviously, they like getting their names on publications, and I concur with Rob that I think that they view the team here as a real value add. Um, but up front, they're doing it for the reason that you actually have a collaborative research network. Um, we've got four postgraduate students. We've got two PhD students, one master's and one honours and uh, one of the PhD students is looking at comparing learning outcomes of simulation versus clinical placement. Um, we do have a parallel study where we're actually testing 
whether simulation can replace clinical practice, and that was funded by Health Workforce Australia for $175,000, but that's a parallel project. That's not solely up under the CRN. We've agreed to three book chapters in the next, by December 1st. <laughs> Uh, critical Conversations for Patient Safety, an Essential Guide for Health Professionals. We've been asked to write three chapters in that book, so we have agreed. Nat's leading the Communicating with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander People chapter. Um, I'll probably lead the Creating Safer Healthcare Organisations. Owen and I will sort out who, who will do that one. And then the third one being co Communicating with Children and Families. Um, and we have... Uh, another staff member who's going to probably lead that one. Our five grants that are currently under review, uh, we've got one up under Healthway, uh, looking at investigating the effect of barcode screening, um, scanning, sorry, smartphone apps on the food purchasing behaviours of 160 obese people. We've got a Health Workforce Australia grant in, looking at clinical supervisors at four universities around simulation again. We've got an early career researcher grant up looking at investigating the prevalence of depression in 150 caregivers of COPD patients. We've got um, an ECU industry collaboration grant in the scheme and we've got partners there with um, Laidall, for, um, which is the large simulation global company. And of course, our university partners are involved in all of these. And that one's about measuring the physiological reaction of students to systematically varied levels of simulation fidelity. And then finally, we've got one NHMRC grant under review, and that's investigating the benefit of public education about the UV index on actual sun protection behaviours of a 1,000 adults. So um, we've been busy, given we haven't had a base to build off. And uh, that was, in fact, my end. So uh, thanks for the opportunity. And, um, you know, it's great to have the opportunity to do what we're doing. Thank you.